So a very warm welcome to everyone here at the Old Sea Summer Summit um, to a session which has no comparables um, because now it's Gaster time at the Summer Summit. And um, a few years ago, it was the first time that we had the pleasure of welcoming Tom Farrelly to a face-to-face -face out event where we were introduced into the magic that is this particular type of talk and we're so thrilled that after the runaway success that was Gusta goes global Tom has decided to grace us with his presence and is joining the summer summit and this time for a very special OGN Gusta session and we are absolutely delighted to have speakers exclusively from the GoGN network at the summer summit today so we're going to be moderating in the chat and we have many people with mics who are going to do their best to try and count along. So first of all, everybody who has a mic, please applaud physically and everybody who doesn't, please clap virtually and give Tom the loudest welcome that we can manage in a webinar. Over to you, Tom. Scott, Scott from the new HI impaired there. Hi, it's great for all the, the virtual claps. It's, so it's great to see it all there. So um, I'm a little bit worried because the weather is sunny, which means that that grass is going to have to be cut now this evening. So, but anyway, we're going to enjoy. We're going to enjoy ourselves. I've been sitting here all day looking at the grass and looking at all the sea summit. So, look, it's great to have everybody here. And it's, as I said, for people who haven't come up to Gasta, Gasta just the Irish word. It just means sort of quick. It's a sort of poor Irish man's version of of, uh, of Pecha Kucha. Five minutes, but it's far less restrictive. The only thing is that we're really strict on five minutes does five minutes. I mean, you, you're all sitting here at, at, at conferences and you've all sat there and you're kind of going, oh my God, will that person ever move on? I wish the chairperson was far stricter. I'm only going to have nine minutes instead of 15 minutes. Well, fear not. Gosta takes all that out. As I said, I am one of the least judgmental people. I am strict with everybody. I don't care who you are, where you're from. That's absolutely, it's five minutes and five minutes is it. But we want everybody to feel part of it and enjoy it. So, so you actually get to count, count the person in. But also, if the person goes over the five minutes, we also count them down. So we, we'll be counting in Irish. I want everybody there to... Uh, Maren put up the link. So even if you're at home, I want you to, 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 to use the hashtag and um, use the hashtag count, take photographs of yourself and tweet them or videos of yourself counting. I want people to get involved. What, you know, the thing, great thing about Gosta, and I done three sessions last year in Edinburgh, it was brilliant, it finished off the whole of the day. And oh, see the sandals there. I like to see that tw Twitter is coming in from, from Lorna there as well. So uh, what I'm saying here is, I want you to all to feel part of it because it's, it's at the end of the day, you've been sitting there, you're tired. Well, nobody falls asleep on a Twitter. And even if someone's rubbish, you know it's going to be over. It's going to be rubbish, though, in the go GM. I can assure you, this stuff is going to be absolutely brilliant there. Joanna there is all getting herself psyched up. It's, it's three days now. She's so far away. I think it's Sunday afternoon in Australia where she is. It's absolutely brilliant. So we're back to the future. So we have Horse. It's Sunday. Michael is back in British Columbia. It's only Monday there. Ross is in Kelowna. I don't know what day or time it is there like that, but it's all the one. So the cr anyway, we're going to have to cry. So we're going to do one or possibly two rehearsals to get people to speak us Gaelic. Okay? Okay, so to make life easy, oh, Theresa, you're really, oh, come here, Theresa McKinnon is really showing us all up with that skill set there. So we're going to be doing all together. I'll do it nice and visual. One, pain, no, three, car, cool. Now we'll do it at a speed, okay? So I don't want anybody lagging behind. So it'll be pain, do, three, three is easy. Car, oh, Louise Drum, good girl. Car and cooing, and then shout out a big lusty gusto gusta. So we'll be all ready to have it a go. Oh, I love the place there. The way it's there. Did you did you tidy up the place? Did you? <laughs> oh, now Martin Weller is Telio. Is 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 he going to join in as well? We want an old Madra, a Madra, an Irish word for dog. It's is Madra. Anyway, are we all ready? Are all our mics on? I don't want to see anybody hiding. Are we ready? Uh, hey, yes, uh, oh, oh, 
Three. 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 Gosta. Gosta. Absolutely rubbish. Absolutely. <laughs> I know I should be encouraging the people, but I, I want a bit more speed. The pronunciations was pretty good. But I think otherwise it was it, it, otherwise it, okay. So we're gonna try. This is our and guys, this is the last chance. And everybody at home, we're all gonna do it together. We need live captions. Somebody can do captions if they can understand my oh. Dublin accent. I tell I don't think there's a caption software that's built for my accent, but we'll give it a go. Are we all ready? Get the hands up and we'll all do the counting together. Michael, get the hands up there. Get the hands up. Are we ready? Uh hey. Yeah, Tracy McKinnon is right, but I think we'll have to, we'll, we'll be here all night, and I tell you, it'll be next Monday for Joanna over there by the time we get started, so, <laughs> <laughs> so right, we have uh, the, 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 the order is Tashkeen, Ada, Aras, uh, Joanna, Michael and Debbie, that's our order. I wanted to be horrible and, and do a sort of randomized thing so people couldn't get comfortable. But Marilyn was nice to them and she said, no, we'll take them in that order. So, but who am I to say anything else like that? So what we'll be doing is, uh, so Tashkeen, if you want to bring up your slides to get ready, and then when you, when we say Gosta, you have five minutes, I'll shout out if you have 10 seconds to go. And if you, when the five minutes is up, what we will all do then is do the same thing again. Hendo, tree, car, kuig. But instead of gosta, it's stod. S T A D, stod. Well, it's the father, but we leave it up. Stod, and it means stop. And it's really fun if someone runs out of time. So if anybody wants to run out of time and we all get to shout, please feel free. It adds to it. It's a bit like a sort of the Colosseum was reinvented for the online world 2,000 years later. So anyway, Katie, I'm delighted to see that you're there. So are we all ready? Catherine, Catherine Cronin out there in Galway and Sharon Flynn. It's great to see you up all there. Brutal, you're right, brutal. Are we all ready? I want everybody to get that. A quick sound check for me if everyone can hear me before I rattle on. For five oh, absolutely. Minutes. Sorry, Tashi. Yes, I can hear you. And, and the main Perfect. thing is, once I can hear you, don't worry about the rest of them. I'm the only one that matters. <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> okay, are we all ready to count in? And Tashi, once we shout Gosta, it's your time to go. Are we ready? Uh, hey. 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 Oh. Hey. Do. Do. Three. Three. Hey, hi everyone. I'm Justine from South Africa. Today I want to talk about the privilege of COVID online. As the global number of COVID-19 cases increase, there has been a mass shift to online education, right from early childhood education to, on to tertiary education. While the puppet online has become a new norm for some, there are, there are others who don't have the same luxury. South Africa is one of the, has one of the highest inequalities in the world, and the impact of the virus has exacerbated these inequalities. While the most privileged can isolate in their homes with uncapped internet, many people in densely populated areas don't have the same luxury and are struggling with basic needs such as water and sanitation. So today, I want to focus on these underrepresented views of the marginalized learners that are often not considered. So in the past few months, I have found myself being divided between two types of conversation. On the one hand, we have debates and discussions on synchronous teaching methods, on assessment methods, on the best types of other methods and video conferencing platforms. And then on the other hand, the education response has had to deal with students lacking electricity, devices, the internet, high data costs, and lack of uh, school, school 
seeding program. Now, um, although I say this from a Global South perspective, it is also important to remember that there are learners with these issues in all parts of the world. And thus, I share my reflections today uh, for everyone. Now, before I share some guidelines, um, I want to focus on three different um, levels of the digital divide. So the first one is the access gap. And this refers to the resources and infrastructure needed for tech-supported learning. The access gap is further shaped by factors such as gender, age, education, neighborhood, and household income. The, re the usage gap refers to the fact that access does not actually equate to effective learning. So for example, to benefit from online learning opportunities, learners need to have digital literacy, internet literacy, parent support, and also the capacity uh, to, for self-directed learning. Now, the reception gap deals with an individual's ability to interpret information. So for example, information literacy is needed for sh uh, searching and sorting through floods of information online. Those with higher socioeconomic status are able to extract greater benefit from the educational possibilities available. So now I'll share four guidelines uh, to an education response to COVID-19 that considers these low resource contexts. The first one is students need care, support, and communication. They are going through a great deal of anxiety right now. So educators need to keep in contact. They need to keep updated with students' situation and offer emotional support beyond academic support. Number two, more focus is needed on uh, to opening schools justly. Governments in different countries have taken different responses to reopening schools. In Kenya, for example, schools are closed for the rest of the year. In South Africa, however, many failed attempts to reopen schools have led uh, to schools being open unjustly without proper precautions. The safety of teachers and learners have been put second behind the goal to complete the academic year. My favorite quote from this is from the People's Coalition. They say, no to just opening schools. Yes to opening schools justly. Number three, use low tech and no tech approaches for learning continuity. These include things like WhatsApp, radio, TV, but most importantly, distribution of printed workbooks and educational contents in free newspapers. Lastly, uh, join calls of solidarity with marginalized students. Um, one example of this is a group of South African scholar activists who have drafted a call for social pedagogy guided by four principles which you can see online. And lastly, I want to end on the note of, with a quote from Arundhati Roy. Historically, pandemics have forced humans to break, break with the past and imagine the world anew. This one is no different. It is a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. The pandemic has shown that the injustices of the pandemic has shown the injustices of our current education system, and now is the time to reimagine it. Thank you, everyone. Round of applause, What's everybody! Round of applause. <laughs> Now, when I say round of applause, you do realise like that you finished very well on time. So that kind of takes the put out. But honestly, well done and very, very well done. Look, some really good points there, and it's certainly not easy to go to go forth. So, as I said, really, really well done. So, are you glad that's over now, Tashkeen? You can sit back and you can just <laughs> relax now, and you know that you have 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 done all of that stuff there. And as I said, you're the first of the. Go GN crowd now to earn your badges, and you can say you hey. are now a Costa Tier. Well done. Thank well done. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now, Ada, are you, are you ready to go? It is, it is up next. Excellent, yes. Oh, that's very good. Oh, that, I like that from Tunde Varga Atkins. Yes, that's a really um, nice way of doing it. This is so, my, my presentation. Excellent. Deb, she doesn't get an extra prize for beating the clock. The fun is to go into the lot of dogs. She's brilliant. So, are you all ready to go? And you're... <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, okay, so everybody, we can start then once uh, 
once we all shout gas that we already get our hands up there we all enjoying ourselves back there i'm watching i'm watching twitter here as well like that so don't forget <laughs> get some pictures up there video whatever it is clean the room do whatever you have to do i got my hair done for all this i hope you all appreciate it <laughs> <Are we? laughs> oh my god chris doubling your i tell you this i tell you this a lot of people becoming multilingual here today are we all ready are we all ready yes Yes. Hey. Okay. So I'd like to introduce uh, four clues that reflect my personal view about the crisis and all the times that we were traveling. And first of all, I'd like to talk about care, of course. Uh, a lot has been said about care during these times. And let me start by saying that when the health crisis was declared in Uruguay on March 13th, we were about to start a new academic year at the University of the Republic. This is the public, the only public, and also the biggest university in the country. And uh, I work at nursing faculty, and I'm not a nurse, but surrounded by nurses. They know uh, a lot about care, and the concept of care is, uh, is uh, a very profound and a very deep in the discipline, in the nursing discipline. Jean Watson, Dr. Jean Watson, um, developed this concept back in 1979. So I think that's maybe the reason why we had at dancing faculty a contingency educational plan even before the whole university had a plan of its own. Uh, of course, both plans were based on care of the community, of the entire university community <clears throat> and the resources of the of the university. Secondly, I'd like to talk about tolerance. And I work at the virtual learning and teaching unit. That's UNEVA, and that's our team. And we've been uh, doing teacher training during the last uh, almost 11 years. We work. Uh, in learning technology and in and training teachers <clears throat> in in learning technology, also using uh, our virtual um, platform, our virtual um, learning platform, for all these these years. And the major task we had uh, during uh, these days has been uh, to to help teachers. And here's where tolerance uh, came to play, and also flexibility, to help them to move their courses fully online we, because they are accustomed to mostly blended learning. And we developed some things uh, to, to help us in this task. And our OER section, that's the, the platform, the, the, um, the institutional platform, we developed virtual essential tools that that's um, an open course for teachers and also a site for tutorials <clears throat> that keeps growing fortunately now i'd like to have a word about trust and of course it's a thing we especially recommend during these complex times trust and, and mutual confidence between to establish relationships between teachers and students and regarding to examinations we have been always uh, recommending and and during our teacher trainings um, <clears throat> to work with formative assessments but formative assessment can be a, a bit difficult when you are in a massive context. So we planned a uh, different strategy based on, on Moodle quizzes mainly, uh, 
with well-designed questions, focusing on well-designed questions, mostly multiple choice questions, <clears throat> and also working with groups, with different groups of students in the platform. And we had just finished the final examinations period and with more than thousand students only in generation in, in this year's generation we had more than a hundred examinations and most of them delivered through the institutional platform with more than 50, 50 model quizzes and uh, most important without any system of surveillance or or um, or anti-plagiarism system. Ten seconds. Finally, a word, a word of flexibility. That's my personal statement. I'd like to to uh, use this opportunity. If you are learning or are trying or applying a new software, I, I I always recommend to try and move to open solutions during this time. I think this is a great opportunity to do that. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Round of applause. Uh, now, really well done. And certainly not easy for anybody. And certainly for someone who's in, if English is not their first language, it makes it doubly a, a doubly great achievement. So honestly, really well, well done. As we say in, in, in Irish, Boulevard, well done. So uh, next up, Arlas, uh, if you're getting all, all set up here. So um, get all our, our pictures up here. Uh, tweets, videos. I, I love the video uh, of, of, of Deb and our dancing feet. So if anybody else is getting stuff out there, I hope you're all enjoying yourself. This is at the end of the day. So um, now what I want you to do now, we've, I've, I've let you off kind of easy enough now at the moment. So uh, if anybody else, I'm going to trust you all. Yes, absolutely. And it's different language. Well done. Really, I, I'm always really uh, off people who, who can, can do it in, in a second language on in a five uh, five minute time so so what we want to do this time is well we're going to do the count we're going to do what we all often do with the face to face we're going to go left to right as well so we'll be going hain on the left doe on the right tree carher kuig and then gosta okay so if anybody has any videos or any cameras i'll just switch them on for a moment i just want to see a few people get the hands up there i see marin there yes that's what we're going to be doing Ada, that's it. So we'll be so we'll all start off to our left. Everybody at home, I'm trusting you all to do all this. All right, I can only see so many of you on the videos, but this is it. It's the end of the day. Well, it's the end of the day here for me. For Joanna, it's 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 September actually at this stage. She's gone so far ahead at this stage. And, and and Michael's back in July in BC. But anyway, we're we're crossing trans transit be time zones and everything there. Ada, I don't know what time it is in Uruguay down there. Is it? it, it I don't know, April? I don't know. It's one, uh, one thirty in the afternoon. One thirty. One thirty in the afternoon. That's, well, it's, it's not the time. <laughs> but anyway, we all need, we've all been going at this for hours and hours. And I see people are, are going down a little bit. So are we all ready? Don't forget we're all going to swing to our left, okay? And uh, for those who are in the southern hemisphere, that's that way. <laughs> so are we all ready? We're all gonna start off. Are we ready? A uh, hail. A hail. A hail. A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A Today, if I can, I will talk about emergence, remote education, and trauma-informed pedagogy in less than five minutes. That will be a challenge. COVID-19 not only interrupted education, but it also caused trauma, psychological pressure, and anxiety, as well as many other problems, such as digital divide, inequity, inequality, and injustice. To lessen damage derived from COVID-19 crisis and to ensure the continuity of the teaching and learning, emergency remote education was put into practice across the globe. 
It was necessary, but unfortunately, we did many mistakes. We thought that education is all about delivering information. That notion is actually a trap that will be caught again and again throughout the history. COVID-19 revealed many facts that we have ignored so far. We have witnessed the real phase of education and saw that education can be so cruel to many vulnerable learners. I believe that education is beyond sending and receiving knowledge. It's more about care. Therefore, care is one of the essential ingredients of teaching and learning. Emergency remote education taught us many things. We have learned that didactic, knowledge sharing, centric pedagogy doesn't work anymore. Education is beyond uh, processes and there are effective emotional processes that should be taken into consideration. In a recent uh, editorial, we said that what we teach in these times can have secondary importance. We have to keep in mind that students will remember not the educational content delivered, but how they felt during these hard times. With an empathetic approach, the story will not center on how to successfully deliver educational content, but it will be on how learners narrate these times. This notion, in fact, highlights why we need trauma-informed pedagogy. In brief, trauma can be physical or emotional, and it is about learners' well-being. From this perspective, we can argue that trauma is a broad term, and I believe that there are many reasons, visible or invisible, that causes trauma. For vulnerable learners, every single second can be traumatic. Identity, color, preferences, and even how you feel can trigger uh, traumatic moments. Now, please consider yourself as a learner affected from COVID-19 crisis. Please further consider yourself as a refugee, as a minority, as a learner uh, with different sexual orientation, as a learner that doesn't fit so-called ideal educational system, an individual in economic crisis, as a person at, at the margins, or simply as an individual who is not understood by society. We could be one of them. We must develop empathy and we must act now. Not tomorrow, not in the future. We have to start seeing the world from their eyes right now. As educators and most important as humans, we must welcome, welcome them uh, as they are. We must listen to them, we must value them, we must share their burdens. Once we really understand them, once we really know about their feelings, the world will definitely be a better place for them and for everyone. I would like to conclude my guest presentation with a saying from Sufi poet Rumi. Centuries ago, he said, come, come, whoever you are, to emphasize that we have to embrace any individual as they are. Centuries later, in 2020, I believe that it shouldn't be too hard to love and care each other as educators, learners, and most importantly, as humans. Thank you for your participation. I think I did it uh, in less than five minutes. Well done. Uh, I was frightened everybody to, to, to make sure that they're finishing on time. <laughs> <laughs> so well done. No, and great points. And 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 you're right, Aris. I mean, like, you list the list that you have there. We're, we're, that's all. We, we all fit into at least one of them, if not more than one of them. So it's it's not a them on us. We're all us, aren't we? And in, in, in that respect. So yeah, well done. Well, well done. Just so, just a final remark. You know, uh, trying to present this presentation in less than five minutes. It's kind of experiencing the trauma during the five minutes. You know? <laughs> well, it, it was funny because you know, it, but but I think it takes it takes a, a real skill to present, you know, and get your message across. As I said, there's a there's a, an old story like in Ireland, and the, the guy writing the letter home to his mother and says, "Dear Mammy, I'm sorry I wrote such a long letter. I didn't have the time to write a short one." And it takes it takes that, yeah. that, that 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 skill there like that, you know. So uh, that's. That's absolutely brilliant. Now, Joanna, I've been waiting. I'm looking forward to this one now. This is 
<laughs> this is, this is going to be really good. <laughs> no pressure at all like that. No, because it's great to talk to someone from the future. So anyway. <laughs> now, did we all like to go on left to right? So, Dave, you're not showing your beard. I, I That was the highlight of the day for me so far. There's no camera on. It's just, you know. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Now, I think rather than starting to the left, we start to the right. Okay, just to make that. Oh, pretty good. Are we all ready? All the hands are all up, and we're going to start to the right this time. I'm trying to find, we're trying to find my slides. It's not working again. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Not what at is all. Going You're, on? Fine. You're fine. I'm You're there. fine. Let there be no panic. Let there be no panic. <laughs> Excellent. There we Thank are. Thank you. Not at all. Not at all. Excellent. <laughs> Good. We're all good. Are we all ready? I'm going to start off to the right this time. So get the hands up. Are we ready? Uh, hey. 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 I'm Johanna, and I teach a core unit in cultural capability at CDU here in Darwin, Australia. When we moved from blended delivery to online only, we had a lot of digital first practice in place. So let me concentrate on supporting the students more generally with the pressures we all found ourselves affected by. This is a mandatory unit for all first year students, and I have about 800 students each term three times a year. We start each lesson by acknowledging the traditional owners and indigenous cultures and the lands on which we meet. And I do that today here from Larrakia country, and I want to acknowledge the owners um, and elders, past, present, and emerging that are here, and also those where you are. I find that this um, obeys cultural protocols, but also helps us shift cognitive gears, uh, situate ourselves in relation to the learning, not just to acknowledge, but really transfer our learning into a cultural respect for the frameworks shared by our senior authorities and setting an intention for how we're gonna care for the knowledge. Now we have the absolute privilege of having a team of Yongo lecturers. Yongo are from East Arnhem country, um, so that's a different territory, but a, a few hours away. They provided these wonderful mini lectures, uh, which formed their conceptual framework for what cultural capability is. This provided a backbone from the complementary theoretical language, readings, and learning activities. So we're engaging with them from the ground up, and it informs everything else we do in the unit. The mind map here uh, represents culture as a set of practices for behavior rather than a tick list. And for the rest of the semester, Students critically engage with relations of power, cultural border crossings, bias, equity, diversity. And this provokes a lot of hot discussion, at the, especially at the moment. But um, the participatory uh, focus that we use um, and with the emphasis on multiple perspectives um, means they feel safe not to choose a side, but to still engage. We made students a discussion board that then they claim for themselves. Um, they gave the teacher, or sorry, they gave each other feedback on the drafts for each of the um, lessons we break down and do weekly. So we spend a lot of tutorial time working through those things. A lot of interaction weekly. Um, and this demystified a lot of work for students who are unaccustomed to critical thinking and assessment pedagogies. So as a forum, they could meet up regionally. They have a peer-assisted um, student um, support sessions there too. Um, so they could also set up uh, partners to do their assignments together. And a lot of them did that without ever meeting their, their partner face-to-face -face because there are students all over the country. Um, so they learned how to work remotely um, as well. I also um, wanted to acknowledge that they were under certain kinds of pressures and 
uh, how to better deliver the online experience. Um, so we pulled students to see the blend of synchronous and asynchronous stuff that we would choose to do. And so they kind of had a, had a real say in that and they did this cute polling thing. Um, and then we could use the time in like the synchronous time to really, you know, break down things and have a proper discussion about stuff rather than um, keep lecturing. So lots of lots of blended um, mixed up ideas about mini lectures and a whole bunch of asynchronous stuff. And then we have um, Q and A sessions uh, during the week. And so it was a really lovely blend and helped inform lots of mixtures. And the final assignment uh, was based on real events. So from the top left is the mining in Kakadu uh, National Park. Um, then we did the bottom left, which is a, a COVID-related discrimination and racism in Australia and around the world. Um, um, and that gave the students a, a chance to process and apply the, the concepts and the, and the learning straight away to things um, that were actually happening. And then there was this other one, which was uh, a racist incident against a traditional owner here in Australia. So they were also at full, um, yeah. So we're creating a space for them to really use their learning in an immediate sense and support each other through a difficult time. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I call a finish. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you you only lured me into a false sense of that I was going to be able to count you and stop you. Oh, that was <laughs> well done. <laughs> oh no, I have to say I love the photograph. My ethnicity is not a virus. Absolutely, really, really powerful stuff. So, uh, yeah, really well done, and uh, that's really, really some, some 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 good stuff. As as everybody here is doing like that, it's 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 great stuff. So, Michael, I'm going to give you a chance to get your 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 stuff. Um, up there. Uh, oh, okay. Ah, oh, well, ah, that was that was too quick. Anyway, <laughs> now <clears throat> I haven't asked any of you to leave your chairs yet, have I? I've been very nice. But what I think is, move your seat back a little bit. So we're going to give ourselves a little bit of bit of space. Okay. So we're going to go up on the hay, down on the dough, <laughs> up on the tree, down on the car, and up on the cooey. <laughs> And we, and we all got that now because you've, you've really been sitting there for all for far, far too long now. And I think we need to get the blood flowing here. I know every bath has had our feet up and then our, our feet dancing at me. And as I said, like, I just want everybody. So I, I know, look, it, it's it's actually brilliant to think that we have people literally around the world making Egypt to themselves, counting on the screen. That's absolutely brilliant. And I'm leading it. I'm happy to, happy to lead that because, guys, look... Uh, I don't want to go on too much, but you know what? We need to come together. And this is like, this is absolutely brilliant. It's a great idea to come together. Yes, we're sharing good ideas, we're sharing good thought, but that doesn't mean we can't sort of enjoy ourselves a little bit along the way. And then it's sort of this idea of fellowship and coming together. And that's what I think the Alt Summit's really about. And if I can just sort of get you to all to just get the blood going, then we play the little parts. So Are we all ready now? Okay, so we're going to go up on the hay, down on the dough, up on the tree, down on the cahar, and up on the cooey. Are we all ready? A uh, hay. Yep. A dough. A tree. A cahar. A A well, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Pascalicious. I am joining you from the west coast of Canada on the unceded territories of the Songhees, Fremont, and Wasanich people. I'm currently assistant professor of educational technology at the University of Victoria, and I'm very grateful to be with you today. So with limited time, I can't share too much about myself, but what I would like you to know is that I've been working in open education since about 2009. I think it's a really useful way to design both learning resources, but also learning experiences. Um, also worth knowing is that most of my teaching at present is with teacher candidates. So for many of them, they're now facing a future teaching in ways previously unimagined. So I return to the theme of the session. Uh, without a doubt, these are extraordinary times and everyone I know is working uh, like they never have before and pulling together in ways that's really remarkable. Depending on your context, teachers and learners are now engaging in ways they never thought 
they would. Many are figuring it out as they go, leading it to an entirely new term for what's happening called emergency remote teaching. Like others, I don't believe that what is happening so far is representative of our history of online and technology integrated learning. So how has your institution responded? Uh, what I've seen, uh, my institution is a rush to buy new tools and technologies to catch up on time lost in supporting online learning. Um, our university even went uh, as far as doing an LMS migration over the summer, uh, all the while while introducing Zoom, uh, Kaltura, Kaltura video streaming, Microsoft Teams, and Crowdmark for large class exam marking. I truly hope I will never find a need to use that. I hope you, or I think we all have significantly more buttons that we can now push. I would have hoped for more emphasis on learning design, community formation, and ways to communicate with and support our learners in a meaningful way during this time. I hope you would agree that the availability of the technology alone does not ensure this. Uh, I do not want to bash uh, the institutional response. However, I would have hoped to see more discussion and explicit prompts about care and considerate learning design as part of the response. In my own research, I found the principles of open education useful in guiding my thinking around learning design. I think there's ways that you can integrate openness through uh, all aspects of learning design from the outcomes, activities, assessment, and uh, all of these can be supported with open educational resources. Uh, I'm going to present you with some provocations uh, that came out of my research. Um, I believe openness presents a learning design approach that can be used for the uh, integration of educational technology. Open educational resources and practices actually represent new possibilities for action in teaching and learning. And I do believe the open and network literacies associated with open practices, both for teachers and students, uh, represent important digital literacies. And lastly, it's paramount. Learners make, um, I think I jumped a slide here, sorry. It's paramount that learners make uh, informed and deliberate choices regarding openness if we're to engage them with it. So I just wanted to share one example of a learning design that um, tries to prioritize openness across the spectrum. Um, this is how we teach our technology integrated uh, learning course to teacher candidates. Personally, we use an open course website. We avoid the LMS to ensure persistent access to the resources and also um, evolving access to the content so they can come back years later and see um, what's been there when they uh, it's still there. We use inquiry driven learning projects. We allow um, students' interest to drive their um, project work and um, we allow them to present it through portfolios that um, enable them to develop network literacy it celebrates their work. It shares that it's portable, they can get it out, they can keep it and maintain ownership. We network these portfolios together so that uh, people can see the work of others um, to encourage peer review and community formation. Um, and I'll just skip just because I only have 30 seconds left. Um, anyway, if you're interested in this, we're hoping to produce a paper. Uh, my colleague Valerie Urban and I are hoping to write something about this model very soon. So this coming term, we all have mountains to climb. Um, I think it's important to acknowledge the cri crisis and prioritize care. Uh, consider the whole student experience. You might have to talk to your colleagues, but even better, talk to your students. Um, consider how much screen time and Zoom meetings they're being involved in and uh, what other trauma might exist. I want to thank you and uh, wish you all the best. Well done, everybody. Come on, and the, virtual, and the virtual clapping as well. Excellent. Great to see all of that. Brilliant. Well done, Michael. Um, and as I said, yeah, I, I think uh, trying to keep stuff as accessible as as possible. Um, I think that's the thing. You know, sometimes um, there's a sense in the whole ed tech world that, you know, it, if we're not careful, it can become technology for its own sake, not amongst ourselves. But I think some people can become besotted. So we, we need something here to... Uh, apologies, my dog now is starting to bite. Mark, one of my three dogs. Um, so Martin's dog is very, very quiet at the moment. So, look, I am, um, as I said, I, I think everybody's been, been, been brilliant, and it's, 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 it's a great. I'm nearly actually tempted to, 
to start doing a PhD again, just so I can join this network. So uh, that's, that's nearly, I said nearly. Get on so, it, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's any postdocs going in Charles Darwin, I'm I'm all over that, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, no, if you need someone for counting and dancing and stuff, don't ask for any academic stuff. That's, that ran out about 10 years ago. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, Martin, harsh but fair. I think that's a fair comment if anybody sees it there. Harsh but fair. Oh, come up, Audrey. Oh, Lorna. Now, I'm going to try my best here because Lorna was saying in the spirit of sort of pan-Celtic um, uh, affirmation, we're all trying to come together. So everybody else can count on uh, uh, in Irish, but I'm gonna try some little. Uh, I I think it's ain ga three keher kuik some slight variation, but we we'll go on that. So I think the counting up and down like that. So look, I won't make you stand up and down. We we'll just go back left to to right. I was gonna get people to sing it, but I think no, no we, we've done enough. We save the voice like like that. So the inimitable Deb Baffert and me, we couldn't have actually planned it to finish with another great. And as I said, guys. You've all earned those badges now. They'll all be on their way to you there, like that. Absolutely brilliant. So. Oh. Excellent. Right. Oh, Coo Holland, of course. You're our last chance. Yes, Martin. Yes, fair play. Deb, don't ruin the fun. Feel free to go over the five minutes. By all means, go over the five minutes. No pressure. No pressure. And what I might actually do is, after four minutes, I might just lie and say, you've only ten, you've only ten seconds. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I should I should be nice, but I, I won't be. So. But you won't be. <laughs> but you're supposed to have the warm-up act. You're supposed to be at the beginning, not up at the end, you know? Oh, yeah, look, we're finishing up with a bang here. We're finishing up with a bang. <laughs> okay, we're ready. So we'll just go We'll just go left to right again. We won't make this stand up. And you know what we will? We'll stand up and down. I think that was better, actually. Up on the hay and, and down on the toe. Are we all ready? Move the seats back a bit, okay? Shake out the arms. Now, lads, this is this is our last one, our last one of, of, of the session, last one of the year. Are we all ready? We're all going to start. We're going to go up on the, on the hay. We, and I'll do the... I'll do my best for the Scottish Gaelic. Okay, are we ready? Uh, hey. Hey. See what you've started, Lorna. A tree. Three. 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 A car. A car. A car. A car. A car. A car. Hi everybody, um, I'm Debbie Baff, um, that's my little Bitmoji, you might see a few of those today, um, that's my Bitmoji student me, so obviously I'm a PhD student at Lancaster University and I'm in my fourth year and for those of you that don't know I also work for ALT now, so I'm the Membership and Professional Development Manager at ALT. Please join ALT, okay. Um, <laughs> And I want to talk to you today about my PhD research. I feel like I keep telling everybody that I'm going to be doing this stuff and I'm not actually doing it, but I really am trying to do it, honestly. Um, so my research is um, set in obviously the context of COVID-19, but I'm hoping to look at education, educators' experiences of emotional support and also their engagement with open educational practices within personal learning networks. The idea being, hopefully, that um, it will help look at possible strategies to maintain the well-being of educators, which I'm sure you're all um, interested in. <laughs> OK, so why is this research needed? Mindful of the fact that I've only got five minutes before Tom starts shouting at me. I've tried to give myself a little reminder. Um, this is the short version about why I want to do this. Um, now I'm really, really happy to see that there's actually some people in my personal learning network in the audience today. Woohoo! And you can probably find yourself in there somewhere. Um, that's a little picture that we did the other day. Um, in terms of personal learning networks, one of the reasons I want to do this is because I feel that I've gained a lot of emotional support um, from my own PLN. Um, and also, although there's research out there that says that people do associate um, PLNs with emotional support, we don't actually know that much about exactly how and sort of to what extent is experienced by people. So I'm hoping that my research will explore that to see if other people are also experiencing this sort of emotional support. 
Um, in terms of um, the kind of openness side of it, there is also support in the research that says uh, that if you look at the relationship between PLNs and open educational practices, it might help some, reveal some sort of conceptual insights. And I found a great piece of work by Kay Adone, so I've been looking at hers and um, I'm kind of encouraged that I'm along the right lines. So here we go. In terms of um, why now and why in this context, I'm still going, Tom, I'm still going, I'm going to try and beat the clock. Hang on, right, okay. Um, Everybody knows we've all been under massive pressure during the, during the last few months. E educators are normally under pressure, but they've been under even more pressure over the last couple of months. Um, there's a lot of um, appetite for looking at psychological and social research. So I'm hoping again that I'm on the right lines with this. And the idea being that um, if we can kind of look at how to support educators, we can support their well-being. Now, um, there is a kind of an indication that we really need to prioritise this, but whether or not it is actually being prioritised, I'm not quite sure. That's me, my, my well-being. <laughs> Although I have to say my well-being and health is really, really good. OK, um, great to see Aris here. Thank you so much, Aris, for your wonderful paper, because that's given me some evidence as well to say that we really should be focusing on effective dimensions of learning as well as academic content and rigour. So hopefully that all helps to kind of stay that I uh, I'm definitely should be doing this sort of research. And again, some of the stuff that I found um, in terms of UNESCO and also places like Yale Centre for Emotional Intelligence, um, they've kind of stressed that teachers really do need this sort of socio-emotional support in order to kind of deliver the learning. Um, and obviously, they're also supporting students as well. So it is kind of critical stuff. OK, I don't know how I'm doing for time. Can't even, be, can't even look at my watch. Oh, OK, openness in COVID-19. Um, Aris's paper again kind of stresses that um, you know openness has really come to the foreground uh, during COVID-19 and it's been sort of something that um, people have shared actively and basically tried to support people and obviously we think that they are um, having sort of significant roles during the COVID-19 pandemic because you know we've all been living in this world for a while people who practice in open education but hopefully you know it will start to kind of uh, spread the way as we go. OK, so I'm doing for time, a couple of minutes. What approach will I take? OK, I keep again, this is another one of these things that I keep going around in circles, but um, I have found um, a nice definition from K. O'Don, which talks about personal learning networks as being something that's maintained mainly within the online space um, and kind of using all of the social media aspects to connect um, and look at uh, professional learning I'm using Catherine's open educational practice definition as well I'm not going to let you stop me <laughs> um, I'm hoping to do qualitative research and one of the things I'm hoping to do is look at heuristic inquiry um, so if anybody knows anything about that please let me know because I'm trying to look at that now and that is me nearly nearly done there's my draft research questions <laughs> please help me <laughs> that's it I'm done I'm done there's, there's my job <laughs> You're a chanter. You're a chanter. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I want one to finish up. Absolutely fantastic. Breathless and brilliant. Breathless and brilliant. Dead bath. Um,